For now, I just want you to write down that these tools exist, and these should be the first eight tools that you memorize. And so if you're going to set yourself an objective to memorize tools this week, these are the eight tools that you should start to memorize. Now, let's talk a little bit about workspaces. So a workspace is the way that your screen is arranged. And so your screen has your document, it has panels, and then it has bars at the top, right? So it has the menu bar and the options bar. And we talked about the tools panel, which is on the left, and it has all these panels on the right. And which panels are open and where they're at is your workspace. And Photoshop has some default workspaces that it will use. Uh, you can see on the list here, if you go to the window menu, workspaces, there's essentials, 3D, graphic and web, motion, painting, and photography. And if you click through that, you'll notice that different panels will be open or different panels will be kind of pushed to the foreground because there are different things that you're going to use if you're painting versus if you're doing photography. Or motion graphics is a good one to look like look at because it's completely different than most of us are used to because it has a timeline because you're making something with video or motion. And so one other thing I like about the Adobe programs is even if you don't really know a lot about motion graphics, you could set that workspace and it will show you different panels that can be used to create motion graphics. I'm uh, really big into InDesign. I also teach InDesign here at the college. And when new stuff comes out, they always put it on its own workspace. And so you used to be able to make apps directly in InDesign. And when it first came out, I didn't know how to make those apps. But I reset my workspace to digital publishing. I played around with it. And then I ended up doing more research on it and figuring out how they work. And that's one of the most common ways, in my opinion, is to kind of get ex um, get exposure to kind of the new things in Photoshop or the things that maybe are out of your wheelhouse. So there's two ways to change your workspace. You can hit the window menu workspace and then you can choose one of these guys here. Now I have in the example essential set. If I were to move the panels around and kind of reposition them or close out of some of the panels that I didn't think I needed, you can reset the workspace by coming back down to reset essentials. You can also reset your workspace by pushing and holding the workspace icon in the top right hand corner of the screen. In older versions of Photoshop, it would say the word essentials and it would be telling you that your workspace was set to essentials. But in the newest version that I'm using, um, that word's not there anymore. It's just a little icon. It's next to the little search spotlight um, icon. And when you push and hold that, you'll get the same flyout menu where you can choose your workspace or you can choose to reset your workspace. Something that we're not specifically going to talk about because it's not, it's not an essential thing that you need to know in Photoshop, um, but I do want to mention can be done, is you can create your own workspaces. And so you can open and close panels and you can put them where you want them to go. And then instead of saying that you're using the Essentials workspace that you've modified, you could save it as your own workspace by hitting the New Workspace option on this flyout menu and then giving it a name. And you can see that I have created one called Jessica's Awesome Workspace. And so if I was to click on that, it would have the panels that I want open where I want them on the workspace. And then these are just some visuals of what the workspaces might look like. And I know that they're small and you're not going to be able to see all the fine details. But what I want you to see is that they're clearly different. And so the painting workspace, which is the one in the middle, you can see that there's brushes and there's colors to choose from. And the motion one I was talking about is in the bottom left hand corner. And there's a timeline at the bottom where you could create things that require sequencing. And the different panels that you see are specific to what you might be doing in Photoshop. And so if you're a photographer, maybe you want to lean towards that photography workspace. And if you're a painter, maybe you want to lean towards the painting workspace. Okay, there's just two more things that I want to cover in my video lecture. Everything else that was on the Everything else that was on the learning outcomes at the beginning of a slideshow can be learned from reading the textbook. And so a context menu is something that you probably want to get used to using. And that is the little menu that pops up if you right click something. Um, there's a difference between a context menu and what we're going to talk about next. And what is important to know is that this is actually helpful. It's going to allow you to expand the capabilities of whatever you're doing. And you should know that it is different depending on what you click or what tool you have selected. And so I have in the right hand image, I have the crop tool selected. And so when I right click, I get crop options. But in the left hand example, I have the dropper tool selected. And so when I right click, I get options for the dropper tool. 
So keep that in mind. Um, I think this goes back to that, you know, if I don't know how it works, I can kind of click around and experiment. Select a tool. If you don't know how you, how you use it, right click and see what the options are that will allow you to do different things in Photoshop. And last but not least, there are tool tips. And this is incredibly important um, at this point in the semester. I think that my words might be a little blurry here, but, but I think you'll get the idea. If you don't know what something is, you can scroll over it and leave your mouse there for a couple seconds and a tool tip will appear. And so in the examples that I have here, I'm hovering over the eyedropper tool, the horizontal type tool, and the clone stamp tool. And so I might tell you, I want you to use the clone stamp tool for this. And if you can't find it, you could hover over all the different icons until it tells you this one's the clone stamp tool. I'll try not to leave you hanging and drying there. I'll usually say it's the fifth one down on the left hand side, or I'll say it looks like this picture and I'll show you a picture of it. But when in doubt, if you don't know what something is, hover over it and most times in Photoshop a tooltip is going to appear that will allow you to kind of figure out what the tool is or if it's the one that you're looking for. Okay, that's all I have for the panels and workspaces lecture. I know this one's pretty short compared to the other lectures. Um, I think that that is a telling sign. Um, so the panels and workspaces things, you're going to pick them up over time and they're not as important to memorize as some of the other lectures where I go into more detail about the specifics of the chapter. Okay, like always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Either email me through the Canvas inbox or through the email address listed on your course syllabus. And if I happen to not be your teacher, obviously email your own teacher and ask them questions first.